Hey everybody, my name is Lilo Grunwald. Welcome to another edition of Live with Lilo. Um, we were having some technical difficulties uh, trying to figure out this, this live video. Uh, Steve and I were doing a little test and it really wasn't working out too well. So um, let me know, please, if you can hear me, if you can see me. Um, I've, I've just been having issues with, I don't know if it's the Wi-Fi, I don't know if it's my phone, I don't know if there's too much stuff on my phone that needs to be cleared off. Um, anyway, can you all hear me? Hey, hi, Jody. Hi, Eve. How are you guys? So let me just send a little invite out here to my friend, Steve. And uh, hopefully I can be seen and heard. Excellent news. Thank you so much, Eve. Um, and hoping that we can actually see Steve because we were doing our little test run and I could not see him. I could hear him. So hopefully while doing this live, we can actually see him and hear him as well. So thank you again for joining me for a live with Lilo. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the thumbs up. And oh, cool. So he's here and I'm going to add him in. I'm very excited about um, chatting with Steve because we were all business and we didn't even talk. Um, and yeah, so let me just invite him on. Steve is an author. He is an actor. He is an all around great guy that I just seem to keep bumping into throughout my life. And uh, funny thing is, is we, we were friends sort of in high school, but not really. Um, and then he left and I'm going to have him tell you all about that. And then we ran into one another at our 10 year high school reunion and hung out. And then we hung out for a few years after that. And then we met up again in LA. So it was just in this crazy circle of life. So let me, let me bring him on and hope, hope this works. You guys, I really hope this works. So I'm adding you on in Steve. So hopefully this works. Let's cross our fingers. Oh my gosh. This was stressing me out. <laughs> um, so hopefully Did it work? Bad. I can only hear you. I can't see you. See oh, you no, I, I can see me. Can anyone else see me? I don't know. Let's see. Can anybody see Steve? Because I can't see Steve. And if anybody has any helpful hints on how we can actually mm. see Steve, please let us know. Um, please I'm, a, I'm a split screen. I see you and I see me. All right. So James, can you see Steve? Because I can't see him at all. They That's see something. me, Lulu. It's just you. Is it just me? Is it just me? Yeah. <laughs> that kind of sucks. I want to be able to see you. <laughs> That's okay. You know what I look like. Yeah. Well, mm. Teresa. How do I share this? How do I share this so that people in LA can see me too? Um, you should be able to share it from my Facebook wall. You should be able to share it. Let's, let's try it. Everybody, thanks for bearing with us while we figure this yeah, out. Yeah, while we work this out. Can you all see Steve? I am very curious if you can see him and, I, and it's just me that can't. Oh, Eve says she can see you. Well, great. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Great. So it's a split screen. This is weird. So it must be my phone. Um, that is very peculiar because I really do want to see you. Anyway, hey. Hi. <laughs> so, great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you can see. All right. Perfect. Then it just is my phone and I probably need an upgrade and that's what Apple does, right? Things start going wrong yeah. and you just need to, to upgrade. <clears throat> great. So this is very bizarre to me because I literally can't see you and I want to be able to interact, but I guess that's right. funny. Cause I watched, I watched your, I watched your video with Mike Portnoy and, and I could see that you were having issues there too. So did we need to have set up a fund after this to help Lilo get her tech running smoothly <laughs> so that she can introduce people from Long Beach to all around the world. Seriously. So <laughs> ridiculous. Hey everybody back in Long Beach. I miss Long Beach so much. Whenever I'm home, the first thing I do is I'll, if someone's picking me up or I'm taking a taxi cab is I go directly to the boardwalk so that I can smell the salt air of my, 
of my childhood, like coming home to spawn. Like there's something about coming back and getting Long Beach sand in my shoes. I need a piece of Geno's eventually, but the first thing I need to do is to be able to go to the boardwalk and smell that. There's something about being home where you grew up that is uh, somehow uh, as essential to your your genetic makeup. I don't know. I don't know. No. Well, I'm in Los Angeles. I'm in Los Angeles. Hey, everybody, uh, back home. I'm not really seeing your comments. So if you want to ask me anything, oh. ask ask it. Lila will see it and she'll ask me uh, what you wanted. Whatever. I'll an I'll answer anything. Knows oh, so all, you, tell all. So you can't see the comments. I can see the comments. I just can't see you. Okay. I see a little bit. Like I can see. I see my um my my sister in law Jill just came on. I can see her. Hi Jill. Hi Jill. She's in Georgia. Hi Jill. It's so it's so so technologically advanced that we're shooting this all over the world. Because I'm sure we'll have some friends, some Dutch friends from Holland, will probably awesome. pop on here and and say Fantastic. hi too. Fantastic. Um, Fantastic. All right. So, so interview me. So what, it. Do it. What, let's go. Let's let's go back to little young Steve and um, because you know. We talked about this. Stevie. I would have been Stevie then. You would have been Stevie? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, you know, we, we hung out in similar circles, but I didn't really know you in high school. Did you finish high school? I did not. I, I actually dropped out of Long Beach High School in the second week of 10th grade. Um, you know, I, I, a lot of people watching from Long Beach, I'm sorry if I bore anyone who just wants to hear some writing tidbits um, who didn't grow up with me, but... When we were kids, I was in the Civil Air Patrol. I was a military cadet. Remember, some of us remember we used to meet and drill, and we were Air Force auxiliary kids. And two of the people in that, in that squadron uh, got killed in a car accident, and they were two of my best friends, Kevin Bailey and Greg Nautis. And so a lot of us, you know, we were gung-ho military cadets. I was destined to join the Air Force and, and uh, when, I, when I got older and fly planes, and then two people were taken from me who were very precious, and then suddenly I grew my hair out and was kind of a hippie and smoked a lot of pot, and I didn't want to have anything to do with anything military. And maybe that was a, 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 an action that pushed me towards be doing something a little more peaceful. So I became a writer. Um, I mean, I, I had that in me already, but... Uh, suddenly that drive to go and, 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 and uh, protect the country was replaced by a drive to write stories as an American author that might uh, be more of a peacefully oriented than, uh, than joining the military. So that was an event from Long Beach. I, when you asked me to do this, I was just thinking that uh, where I grew up had a profound effect probably on everything I did, probably on everything all of us do. Um, so that was maybe that was the impetus of me just even shifting careers right there. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is a very, it's a very unique place that we grew up with, grew up in, um, and had the, I mean, I just think we were so lucky growing up in a place like this. Uh, not oh, everybody yeah. has the opportunity to grow up in a place like, like Long Beach. We and, could play uh, outside. We didn't have to lock our doors. This is why doors. I started it was doing wonderful. this. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, yeah. We had an amazing uh, childhood. So, so what I just saw. Car I saw Carla. Carla Shuren just joined. So we can correct something you said in the beginning that wasn't exactly right. We did meet at your ten-year reunion, and it was Carla's ten-year reunion. But remember, I dropped out. I went as Carla's date into the reunion and that's where we met up again after all those years. <laughs> that's funny now did you did you ever <laughs> did you pull did you ever get your your uh your high school i year? actually i while you guys were still in um high school i was 16 and i took my ged i took it over in long branch new jersey i was too young to take it in new york you had to be 17 i was only 16. so i went over to long beach long branch new jersey on a on a on a bus i had to take the I took the uh, LIRR to Penn Station. Then I took a bus um, from Penn Station to Long Branch, New Jersey, and I took my GED exam over there. And so I actually took my GED and went to college when I was 16 down in Fort Lauderdale while you guys still had two and a half more years to go in, uh, in high school. So I started college early. And the only difference was I got to pick what classes and what I was interested in, like a little younger than you guys did. And I ended up getting my master's degree in English when I was 20. Um, 
whilst I, I just kind of I kind of just accelerated everything a little bit. Right. How's so that? smart you That's are. Good. So smart. So what was the very first thing that you wrote? Like ever? Well, you know, that does, again, thinking back to Long Beach, I used to sit in the Laurelton luncheonette, the, the Laurel, right? When everybody else was asleep. I had insomnia when I was a kid. I was sitting there at like 11 or 12 o'clock at night uh, with Mrs. Donovan serving me coffee, um, uh, writing there. So, I mean, I was writing like poetry. I, Mrs. Donovan get, paid me 25 cents once for a poem that I read to her that she liked. I think that was my first professional sale Aww. there before I would, before I would That's into sweet. the city, into the West Village with Keith Gilbert. I don't know if any of the Gilberts are on. And Keith would play the guitar while I read poetry out loud. And that was kind of the genesis of me writing and getting paid um, as a teenager. I, I knew I wanted to write uh, really young. Amazing. So, okay, so <laughs> you've been like everywhere. I feel like you are like one of the most worldly people that I know. And so, so what, what I'm a ping pong. I think of it as being a human ping pong ball. It's <laughs> the reason for that is, is because right now I'm making a living writing video games. And so video game companies bring me around the world to come in and I, I start I, I can be writing anywhere, right? If you're a writer, you can you just need a laptop, oh, you can write anywhere, any Starbucks anywhere. But they always um, uh, they always um, want me to come into their offices at least for a few months. So I've got to live in some crazy places like Berlin. Um, um, I, I just came back from a trip where I was in Finland. Um, I'm in Holland often. Uh, I'm, I'm so lucky that I get to travel around and go to video, video game conferences and, and work on, on stories. But keep us back in Long Beach. Let's go back. Let's stay in Long Beach for a little bit because my heart please. is pounding that we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I lived in the canals and I sat in the house and wrote books and didn't know if anything was ever you know, going to get published. Um, I have, I, my books are up on top of my desk. I don't know if you can see my desk there, but I keep them there for inspiration. And, and, and the, the first book I wrote was called Captain America is Dead. And I wanted to pull it down off the shelf and show it to you when to my dismay, I realized I don't have a copy of my first book, which is probably a, a milestone in any author's life next to the first time you see your book in a used bookstore up on the shelf is I don't have a copy. Um, but what I did find was this Long Beach Herald article. Uh, I'm gonna try to get it so you can see it. I'm looking at the wrong thing. So there it is in the Long Beach Herald picture of me with my cat and the cover of the book that says, Captain America is dead. And wait, here, so it says, wait, I need my glasses, my reading glasses, which are, I need my glasses to find my glasses. Yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> there, I got it. Um, Miss, Mr. Altman, who grew up in Long Beach and holds a master's degree in drama from Villanova University in Pennsylvania, has been trying to make it as an actor. That's funny, because you even said actor too. I was an actor for five minutes in New York, but that's funny. Uh, appearing in commercials and as an extra in a few feature films. He also teaches drama part-time at the Harriet Eisman Community School on Park Avenue. Like, I literally had forgotten that I was teaching over there. Um, uh, I think that's, the, was that the time period that we would meet up in the city? I think so. No, oh. this is, no, this is back. I mean, I'm still a, uh, uh, maybe I'm like 21 or 22. I mean, probably similar to there. Also, there's, yeah. a, there's a moment here where we get political, and I think because we're in a political, a strange political climate today, this is interesting. Mr. Ar Mr. Altman argues that the story is, a, is apolitical, but admits, admits much of his inspiration came from the recent presidential election, in which he said the lesser of three evils was picked when the nation was screaming for a true leader. The political <laughs> process, he said, has left mainstream America feeling its opinions are either unwelcomed or irrelevant. Um, I think it's the opposite of that now. I think everybody's got an opinion and we are being heard. So it's interesting that that first one was during a political climate and, uh, and uh, here we are now. Here we are. Uh, doing it again. Yeah. So anyway, I've been, really, I've been so lucky, Lilo. I, um, uh, I don't really have any skills except telling stories. Um, it's so a the fact skill. that I get to write them and people... Yeah, the fact that people um, pay me to make stuff up, I'm 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 
I'm so lucky. And, but I mean, I, I work at it and, uh, and, uh, and I've had, um, how many have I had? I've had, uh, I've had 11 books published. Um, wow. and I'm sure That's some people question. out there listening to this, some people out there listening to this are, 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 um, are interested in writing and, and the craft of writing or they have stories to tell. And especially my homies should reach out to me on Facebook and I will be happy to advise or steer them in the right direction um, and pass it around. And, and Long Beach has other writers, by the way. There's another science fiction author from Long Beach named Charles Sheffield, um, who I've never had the pleasure of meeting, but I know he came up with the idea that a mosquito could have bitten a dinosaur and then been encapsulated in amber. And Michael Crichton uh, went to Charles Sheffield and bought that idea off him to make Jurassic Park, or at least that's how I understand the story went. So Michael Crichton was not an asshole who just stole that. He went and paid a Long Beach writer for his idea and then made a huge uh, film franchise after it. So that's awesome. <laughs> Wait, did I freeze you? You froze now. That's okay. They, I, they're seeing us. I, I think when you, we freeze, so the no audience idea. can still see I, us. Somebody give a thumbs up on that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I hear you <laughs> fading out and then coming back in. So I'm like, I'm totally lost not being able to see you. But whatever, as long as people can see you, I don't care. <laughs> That's good. Okay. So what? ask me more questions. I'll tell you no lies. So, okay. So, so you've written 11 books. That's pretty impressive. Really impressive. Have yep. any of them become movies? You know, it's funny because I live in Hollywood. And uh, I originally came out here because a book that I wrote called Deprivers, which was a medical epidemic, got into a bidding war with all these producers out here wanting to, uh, to make it into either a movie or TV. That's it, Deprivers, yes. And it's up on my wall. See that? That's up on the, it's up over my desk. Um, so that's what brought me out here when I was living in Holland. And uh, it's, it's been optioned uh, multiple times. It's under option now. I got to write the, the pilot television uh, pilot for it. And we're shopping into networks. But so the answer is yes. All of my books have been optioned and scripted and made into movies and had amazing actors attached and amazing directors attached. And not one of them has actually been shot. Um, it's a strange thing that happens out here. They like your idea, they push it forward, but there's a lot of ideas and a lot of movies and a lot of products, projects getting done here. And so you get, you know, you get pushed, we'll do this next year, we'll do this another time. So I'm just happy they pay me. But I, I'd like to see some yeah. of it shot, but I'm just happy it, that they, they it, have it, me right. It, now, people, on the flip side People that, not in the industry, yeah, people not in the industry don't realize how much goes into making a movie like until a movie actually gets made um it could be years in the making so people don't realize that um so i i do i i'm i'm holding out for your books to become movies all of them <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> well the um, good news though now, I'm, how... I, the good news for me creatively Go ahead. No, I'm listening. Go ahead. Wait, I lost you for a second. No, I'm listening. Go ahead. Oh, the good news for me creatively, though, is uh, while I've been writing books, which is my passion, um, I fell into the video game world. Um, and I get to write the stories for the video games. Um, and I get to watch the artists, you know, uh, illustrate them and build them right before my eyes. So it's, it's almost like making a movie, but it's a game. And oddly enough, video games um, have now become a higher grossing industry than the movie business. So while I've been sitting here in Los Angeles, um, watching them not make my movies, can I say that? Watching them not make my movies, um, out of my books, uh, the, I've been growing my audience as an author, but also I'm writing these video games and uh, I wrote one game that was called Pearl's Peril that now has 90 million people watching it, uh, playing it rather. So that's a, that's a pretty big wow. audience. I mean, when you think about writing a novel, you might have 30, 35,000 wow. people read it if, you're, if, if it does really well. But 90 million people playing a video game and reading the story that I wrote, I mean, it's, it's kind of blows my mind that I'm doing that. Because like, if, if somebody reading 
your work is affected by what you've just done. The fact that I hopefully positively affected 90 million people reading one of my stories in a video game. Um, that's a, that's kind of an interesting, uh, dynamic that I have with all these people. Um, unfortunately, usually it's one way I wrote something, they read it, but there, we do have message boards for the video games where sometimes the people who are playing them write back to me and talk to me about the story. And that's the most gratifying thing in the world. Right. Right. Well, I mean, these these video games truly look Hi, like Hamburg. films. They look like these extravagant movies. They're pretty incredible. I mean, amazing. Oh, Lisa, some of your Long Beach people say hello, by the way. Yeah. Oh, Lisa, just so you know. Lisa, Lisa Hamburg Sardo is on. She says, hi, Steve. Yeah. Hi, Steve. Hi, Lisa. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably delayed. I feel like I'm delayed on your end. That's what happens when you have three hour time difference. Whatever. <laughs> I know. Um so you still have I know you still have a house here. So so when when are you coming back to Curly Street? Oh wait, so, so say that one more time. You know what? I'm gonna I put your volume delayed. up. I was I'm gonna put your volume up on my Facebook. Hold on, so now I can hear you better. Good. All right, you're better. Hi, Mary. Lila, are you talking? <laughs> I think we froze. I don't. No, I have I'm no good. Idea you're just not on. talking again. Oh, yeah. No, I was wondering when you're when you're actually going to come back here uh, to Curly Street and, and visit us in Long Beach. Curly Street. Um, I, well, I was just out there. Hi, Daniela. I was just out there. Um, uh, well, I, of course, I was there for Sandy because um, I had to do repairs on my house, just like everybody in Long Beach had to do. Um, but uh, I might get out there uh, around the holidays. I'll invite everybody okay. out. Where should we go to everybody have a drink? Knock on the door. <laughs> That's funny, Lilo. You're on a delay. I am on a delay. I know. I know. It's stupid. Oh, wait. I don't I see don't myself anymore. Really. I don't see myself anymore. What happened? I don't know. Wait. All right, everybody who just lost me for a second, that was because I accidentally turned the camera around so you were not looking at me, but behind my camera. There, we're back. Oh, yes. You're back? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> so now, what? what yeah, we're what back. They can see me. They can see me you? again. They can see me again. Okay. What's, what's new in, your, uh, in the life of Steve? Well, what, is there any big news that you can tell us? Well... I'm writing a, uh, an Alice in Wonderland game um, that uh, is kind of a continuation of Alice in Wonderland. So oh. that's been exciting. I mean, one of the best things about being a writer is I have gotten to be Batman. I have gotten to be Sherlock Holmes. I have gotten to be uh, Alice in Wonderland right now. I've gotten to be Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz because when you are writing and creating a project, you, you have to be it. You know, you talk about that, that we were actors in New York when we were kids. Um, I, that skill comes in handy because you have to, you have to be Batman. You know, you, when you're scaling right. the walls of Gotham City and you're writing it, you have to kind of put yourself in that mindset because if you don't believe it, the audience, when they're reading it, isn't going to believe it. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's why you see all these famous actors on the streets, like, talking um, to So I'm right. Going through the motions. Um, yeah. I just, I just worked on uh, The Joker with Joaquin Phoenix, and he lost 40 pounds for this role. I mean, he, he's so thin. <laughs> but you want to talk about method acting? You have to become that, to that become. person. You have to become that character. So yeah. Right. 
Yeah, well, fortunately, I just have to do it in my head. I don't have to really lose a lot of weight when I'm doing that. So, um, but here, so you want to get, you want me to give you an example of like what I do? So yeah, I'm doing this Alice in, in, one, in, one, in Wonderland game, right? So I have to, I had to create the opening scene. Like, how do we go into this world? It's like the beginning of a story. So let me give you a little bit of my process for how I did, opened Alice in Wonderland, because everybody knows Alice in, the Alice in Wonderland story, okay? So we, I'm gonna, this is like I'm pitching Hollywood, okay, everybody? So we open on Alice's family house. Alice Little is her name. So we open on the little uh, living room. And it's the only light in the room is a small gas lamp because it's 1890 London, right? There's a small gas lamp sitting on a dining room table and it's a long table. It's big enough to see um, like 10 children, okay? It's a birthday party is set up, but there's, it's an empty table, but we see, you know, the birthday hats and uh, we see a big cake in the middle of the table. And as we pan down the table very slowly, we see a tea kettle on its side and a little mouse scurries across the table. And then we pan a little further and we see a birthday cake that says Alice eight. Now she was seven in Alice in Wonderland. Alice was seven and a half and through the looking glass. And so now she's eight years old. And as we turn around the cake, we see Alice infinity because the eight is an infinity sign when right. it's on its side. Right. We pass the cake and we hear Alice's voiceover say, why is a raven like a writing desk? Asked the Mad Hatter. And as we come over the side of the table, we see Alice sitting on the floor with eight children all seated around her. And she's making shadow puppets on the wall of the Mad Tea Party from Alice in Wonderland. She's telling them the story. And the kids are enwrapped. There's eight children, four boys, four girls, all ethnicities, right? You have to do that just the right way. So they're watching her. And so she makes a shadow puppet of the Mad Hatter, which you can't see, Lilo. She makes a shadow puppet of the Mad Hatter. Why is a raven like a writing desk? Asked the Mad Hatter. To which the March Hare replied, and she stops, and she's got this bunny shadow on the wall. And she stops, and she looks at it, and she takes her hand away, but the shadow stays on the wall of the rabbit. And then it, it winks its ear. And then she says, I dare say... I've seen a rabbit without a shadow before, but never a shadow without a rabbit. And then all of a sudden the shadow turns and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it peels away from the wall and becomes 3D. And it's standing there and all of a sudden it's black eyes open because now it's got life in it. Like these white lights are behind its eyes. And it pulls a black shadow sword out of its sheath. And then all the children start screaming and running across the room. Now Alice, brave Alice, looks to the toy chest, grabs a wooden sword and pulls it out and holds it in front of her. And then this shadow rabbit and Alice start dueling across the dining room. And everywhere the, the rabbit slices its sword, the curtains fall and things break. So we realize that it's coming through our world. So Alice and the shadow rabbit are smashing things all over the table, the cake is flying, children are screaming. And then all of a sudden a tear opens up in the middle of the living room in space time. And we see the Mad Hatter and the White Rabbit. And they're like, Alice, come quickly. You're needed in Wonderland. And Alice just jumps through the hole after them. And then the rabbit jumps in after them. So there, I just set the opening scene of, what, of this new game called Shadows in Wonderland. And then the artists and the animators will draw this script that I wrote for them. And I get to watch it you know, come to life uh, just as I'm doing that. And that's how the game opens. Wow. That sounds awesome. And when is Lila's, that going to come out? Lila's speechless. <laughs> no, when is that going to come uh, out? I mean, I, may, maybe March of next year, that game could be ready, I'm hoping. Okay. But do you see, do you see how awesome. awesome this is? I get paid see, to just kids, let my imagination flow. You never know flow, when life is going to take um, you. You could drop and, that and out. And come up with these ideas. It's great. <laughs> and become a world-famous writer. <laughs> It's really fun. And there's nothing like that's when I run into someone that's played one of my games who enjoys the, the story. It's, it's really right. thrilling. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, and it's not just, yeah, it's not what just else? kids Come playing on. these video Come games. On. I mean, these Does are anybody very else have any questions? Games. Uh, well, I'm looking you know, a lot at, of children's fairy, children's fairy tales are very adult oriented. 
Yeah. Well, that we right? know. Alice in Wonderland, especially. Now. Yeah, well, Alice I in Wonderland has a lot of drug references. Delay. There are, yes. Um, uh, Danielle yeah. Cantafio, yeah. Danielle Cantafio wrote, Long Beach Theater Guild rocked as kids. Were you in Long Beach Theater Guild, Steve? I was not. I wasn't. I was just a Civil Air Patrol, military cadet. Yeah. Um, Mary Holder McGann. I wasn't, in, I wasn't into it yet. No, I know. Mary Holder McGann uh, said, Steve, I'm one of your very first fans. Fun watching this. Anybody have questions for Steve? He's out, he's out in L.A. He's, uh, he's a La La Land, uh, La La Land kid. Yes, they are. Cheshire. I, I spend I spend the majority of my time either in Los Los Angeles or Berlin. Oh, Berlin. Do you do you speak German? Oh. I don't speak. I speak Dutch actually, which helps a little bit in Berlin, but it doesn't. But I really like house music, so that kind of makes up for it. <laughs> <laughs> you you go out club go out clubbing in berlin oh yeah and the clubs in berlin don't close until sunrise so i don't know how everyone goes to work they like go and they club and then i don't know how they get themselves back to work in the morning i i don't know even know how you go out clubbing i'm like in bed by nine o'clock these days it's pretty pathetic well you're married now you don't go clubbing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know what? I was I was gonna ask if you guys wanted me to read something. What would you like to read? I I, I mean I I was thinking I would read um, something from uh, uh, my Wizard of Oz story. I did a Wizard of Oz story uh, a little, short time ago, and it's kind of a reverse Wizard of Oz story. Okay. I figured you guys asked Porter to play and you Long? refused, so so maybe I should read. Yeah, I'll read. Some, I'll just read a little short thing. No, I'll just read a little. I'll read a little passage. Okay, let's hear it. Yeah. All right. I, okay. Uh, okay. I need my glasses, and I need this for posterity. What time is it? If you'll mail me a slice of Gino's pizza. How can somebody chime in? Is my is my sound good? I think so. Can okay. everybody still hear Steve? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. You can see it, John? We're good? Okay. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see. I can see. Okay. Cool. This is me with me reading glasses on. All right, I'm gonna push it back a little. Okay. All right, so I, I don't had need um, to see, so I'm I had two weeks. I had two weeks to. Um, I had two weeks to um, to come up with this story because it was an anthology of uh, stories based on the Wizard of Oz, and uh, somebody, I guess, a couple writers didn't turn in their stories. So this anthology called me and said, "Would you write a story for us?" I said, "Sure," and they said, "But you've only got two weeks, so I had to do it really quickly." And uh, so in my Wizard of Oz story, for some of you who've, who've, who've uh, watched The Wizard of Oz, you might remember in the beginning, uh, Dorothy in the real world meets uh, a people in a traveling circus. And also that all the actors and farmhands show up again in Oz as the scarecrow and as the lion and as the tin man. It's the same actors mm -hmm. in, in the other world, which some might argue is all really in her imagination. So I took my story to say that uh, there really were doppelgangers in Oz and in Kansas, and that if your doppelganger died in one or the other, you would die in, in the real world uh, as you do. So I'm not going to start at the beginning of the story, but this is a, a reverse story where Dorothy has a doppelganger named Lorelei, and Lorelei has been raised by the Wicked Witch of the East and the Wicked Witch of the West, and she's their apprentice, but she looks exactly like uh, Dorothy. And the idea is that they're gonna switch the two of them 
to bring Dorothy to Oz and send Lorelei to Kansas so that she can kill the wizard who is their arch enemy uh, in Kansas. All right? So I'll read a little bit. Okay. All right. Lorelei mounted her broomstick. Yeah. Lorelei mounted her broomstick behind Aunt East and wrapped her arms tightly around her waist. The witches rose in the air above the courtyard and began to circle the castle. Aunt West on the outside, flying clockwise. Aunt East and Dorothy and Lorelei on the inside, flying counterclockwise. Increasing speed as they circled, with Aunt West and Aunt East chanting the charm of making. Hot wind stung Lorelei's eyes. Her pigtails came undone and lashed about her. Faster and faster they flew. Aunt West became a blur. Lorelei clung desperately to Aunt East. They'd conjured a cyclone. Aunt West departed, soaring upward and out of the funnel as Aunt East flew them into the calm center and began their descent, pitching their broom downward and downward toward a small farmhouse below. Lorelei imagined she saw the house begin to shake. Suddenly it dislodged from the ground and was spinning, whirling upward, growing larger and larger, larger as it raced directly at them. Lorelei screamed and blacked out. When she opened her eyes again, she was plummeting downward. Tiny wings strained to bear her weight against the violent buffeting. She realized she was being carried. Prospero, that's her winged monkey, by the way, Prospero, who rarely did as he was told, had followed them and at the last possible moment snatched Lorelei off the back of Aunt East's broomstick before the house could dash them to their deaths. Eventually, they tumbled down amid a cloud of hot, swirling dust, suffering little more than a bump to Lorelei's head. They looked at the carnage, the crushed barn, dead animals, and debris strewn as far as the eye could see. The cyclone and farmhouse were gone. Where was Aunt East? A gut-wrenching pain gripped Lorelei, doubling her over onto her knees. She heaved into the cracked Kansas dust. What's happening to me, Prosper? She cried. The monkey tried his best to comfort Lorelei, pulling her hair from her face and patting her gently on the back. Suddenly, the Witch of the East bloodstone ring appeared on the middle finger of Lorelei's right hand, and Prospero understood. It's a transfer of power, he whispered softly into Lorelei's ear. Unfortunately, it means your aunt is dead. You are now the Witch of the East. Lorelei burst into tears, and then she heard Aunt West's voice in her head. This is no time for tears, girl. Your Aunt East wanted only two things in life, to see you grow to one day fill her shoes and to see you slay the wizard. Now that day has come and you have the power to fulfill her fondest wish. Armed with that ring, you may utter the charm of making. You must not let her down. Dorothy, Dorothy, where are you? A woman's voice called in the distance. The girl, the girl's Aunt Em and Uncle Henry are searching for her. They can't see you until I let them. You mustn't fail us. Get up, be there, Dorothy. Arm yourself and find the wizard and hide that disobedient monkey. Dorothy, where are you, girl? Came a man's plaintive voice close by now. Lorelei could no longer sense her Aunt West's presence. There she is, Uncle Henry yelled. She turned to Prospero and quickly sketched a figure in the air with two extended fingers on her right hand, which rendered the monkey invisible just before a group of farmhands rushed to hug and kiss her. Lorelei found their affection disquieting. I feared you were lost, Uncle Henry said, squeezing her as though he might never let her go. Where's Toto? Toto, Lorelei asked and froze, fearing she'd given herself away. Your dog, Dorothy, Aunt Em said. Where's the poor dog? I have no idea, Aunt Em. I hit my head. She offered her head for inspection. Oh, dear, Henry, she has hit her head, and her scalp is cold. We better take her to the cellar to lie down. They brought Lorelei to where the house had stood and led her into the cellar, where they settled her on a, ha on a hay-filled mattress. The other farmhands farm went to find out which, if any of the stock, had survived. Aunt Em took Lorelei's right hand. Dorothy, where did you get that strange ring, she asked. I found it, Lorelei said. Bring your hand to her heart, covering it with her other hand. 
Well, it looks to be cutting off your circulation. Let's take it off for now. She tried to coax the ring from Lorelei's finger. It would not come off. No matter how much Aunt M pushed, twisted, or tugged it, she did not know that only Lorelei's death would make removing it possible. But Lorelei knew and whimpered at the reminder of how the ring had come to her. There, there, Aunt M said. I'll leave the ring be. I want to go home, Lorelei said weakly. I'm afraid our home is gone, Dorothy. Nearly everything we had was lost in the cyclone. We're all lucky to have survived, to still have each other. That's what truly matters. We'll build a new house soon enough, won't we, Henry? This was a nightmare. Lorelei needed to wake up. She needed to arm herself and find the wizard, the man who killed her parents, and then kill him in order to leave this miserable place and go back to Oz, her real home. There. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. So that's what awesome. I do. I like to find old stories and make a little twist on them sometimes. Oh, I think I am now breaking up because now I can't even see me. I am? I don't, yeah, you just, you just flipped. But everyone can still see me, so I'm going to take nothing. over the show now. I see a purple screen. But we can still, can you hear me? Yeah, but you're breaking up. Can you hear me, Lila? <laughs> Thanks, to y'all. Thanks to y'all. I, I think it might be time for a new phone. I think my phone is failing me. I do. <laughs> I've been having too much trouble. I, literally, I can't even see myself. Okay? Anyway. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for, for joining me. I'm sorry we had such technical difficulties while we were doing our testing before this. Um, I'm glad that everyone was able to see. Um, I have to cut it. I have to cut us short because I have a dog being dropped off. <laughs> we have a dog boarding. We have a dog being, being dropped off. That that would totally disrupt everything. Uh, thank you so much. So, can people still find your books in the bookstore? Can they go to Amazon and find your books? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Bookstores, bookstores, Amazon. Amazon. Barnes and Noble. Okay. Barnes and then and if Noble. they reach out to me, I can sign them. Say it again. If they reach out to me, I can I can get to them and sign them sometime eventually. You can sign them. Oh, now I can't even hear you, Steve. I want to thank you. If you all can still hear me, I know this is really it's disruptive to me on my end because literally, I am seeing a purple screen. I don't know what happened here. Um, but I want to thank my my very good friends, Stephen Elliot Altman, for joining me on this Live with Lilo broadcast. Uh, hopefully one day we can do it one-on-one -on -one when I have a camera guy and I don't have to worry about this, this live Facebook stuff. And um, I want to thank you. Steve, do you have any last last things that you want to say before we, we shut it down? Yeah, yeah, my Long Beach my peeps, 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 you're, 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 uh, you're my uh, most important most fans. Important fan. So reach so out to me out if to you, me uh, you uh, get a book get and a book you need to sign. Um, my, um, games my games are, are free, free to play. To play. Uh, there's uh, uh, Ancient uh, Aliens, Aliens, Pearl's Peril, Nine Dragons. If you play them, we'll play together. And if you have questions about writing or writing stories, reach out to me on Facebook. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Check out Steve's videos. Um, I know you all like playing video games like my husband does. And um, I love you, Steve. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for hopping on and watching and dealing with our, our technicalities. <laughs> Peace out and Long Beach rules. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.